kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcasts at a kids company about. We are so glad you're listening to this show, and I wanted to let you know that we've got an entire network of podcasts dedicated to producing original content that talks up to kids, centers the things going on in their world, and engages and challenges how they see the world and themselves. With shows about facts, climate justice, current events, and activism, there's a show out there made just for your kid. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Hi there, and welcome to 1.5, A Kids Podcast About Climate Justice. I'm Olivia Greenspan. And I'm Zanaji Artis. And we believe that kids like you deserve a livable future. A livable future. This means a future where no one will have to worry if our planet is healthy enough for humans to live safe and happy lives. That's Joanna. She's our on-hand dictionary if we ever come to a word or phrase you might not know or understand already. This is a show where we explore the challenges facing our planet with scientists, with youth activists, and other environmental leaders who have experienced the realities of the climate crisis firsthand. Today, we'll be talking with one of those environmental leaders, Jamie Margolin, a friend of mine and a fellow co-founder of the youth-led climate justice organization Zero Hour. Yes, and I'd also like to note that this episode is closing out the intersectionality portion of the season, and the conversation with Jamie focuses on why it's so important to have a variety of voices in the climate justice movement and how you can be a part of the movement too. So in the past two episodes, we talked about what environmental racism is and what action on climate justice looks like. And today we're excited to dive into this conversation with Jamie about why it's especially important for young people to share their voices in this effort. And in addition to introducing Zero Hour and what we do, our conversation is also about the importance of many different types of voices in the climate movement. And we also discussed whether one can be an activist and still share your full expression of your interests with the world. So let's jump in. In this podcast and in our book, Kids Book About Climate Change, we emphasize the importance of raising our voices to make a difference. And that's all about what one year journey, but also uh, the book that you wrote, Youth to Power, Your Voice and How to Use It. And so want to know from you, why is using our unique voices to call for climate justice so important? Using our unique voices to call for climate justice is important because no one should be sitting out this fight if they have the want to fight for climate justice. Truly everyone, this issue is so big and there is so much to fix that everyone has a role to play. And even though it feels so overwhelming and like there's no it's too big for just one person to address you doing the best that you can is going to make an impact because then if everyone starts doing the best that they can then the world changes and I just don't think that sitting out is an option at this point and so it's important for people to raise our voices because we have to raise our voices to to save ourselves I love that answer and I love when people bring up the fact that this problem is so big and there's room for so many different talents to contribute to this movement. And, you know, you're, you're so unique in that you've, you are someone who's using your vast range of talents to contribute to the climate justice movement. Earlier in the podcast, we interviewed Levi Dreheim, who's part of the Youth Gov community, and you're also part of the Youth Gov community. Can you tell us about your, your court case? Yeah, absolutely. So I am a plaintiff in the Youth v. Government um, lawsuit suing the state of Washington for their continual worsening of the climate crisis. For those of you who don't know, there's this organization called Our Children's Trust that helps young people hold governments legally accountable for the climate crisis and try to sue them or take other legal action in order to try to get climate action mandated through the courts. So it's another strategy for climate action. There is no one best strategy for climate action. We all have to be attacking this issue at every lens that we can. So in the courts, on the streets, lobbying, through artwork, like 
every possible way of taking action is what we have to be doing. And so this is a legal way. And so the lawsuit is still going on. It still isn't finished, but I've been a part of that for several years. Awesome. Yeah. And I think definitely it's so important to always share that, you know, these, these things are ongoing. This is an ongoing fight and there's so many ways to get involved. And so, yeah, sharing all this information is super useful. Next, we asked Jamie about the organization we co-founded together, Zero Hour. Yeah, well, you know the story, but for everyone listening, Zero Hour is called Zero Hour because we have zero hours left to act on the climate crisis. We started the summer of 2017. I posted online that I wanted to start a youth climate march and that I was going to organize a big like, mass youth climate mobilization, but needed a team to help me do it. And that's when Zanaji and I, while I was... While I said that, I think around that time, yeah, I was going to a summer, a political summer camp, and Zanaji was also going, and we met there. We were in a class together, a political communications class for the summer program, and we met, and then we brought in other youth, and we built this team to organize youth climate marches in Washington, D.C., and as many cities around the world as we could, and also a youth climate lobby day and other events to try to push towards urgent climate action. To lobby means to seek to influence a politician or public official on an issue. Citizens and climate action advocates from across the country often travel to Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. to meet with members of Congress and ask them to take action on climate change by creating climate justice policy based on their knowledge, stories and advice. And we had our youth climate march in the pouring rain. The day of the, of the march came and it was absolutely raining, pouring, but we did anyway. And it was a big success. And it it was incredible. And then ever since that March, there have been more and more protests and actions that Zero Hour has been doing and is still doing to this very day. Yeah, it's incredible to know that something that we started in high school and early high school is still going strong today with both of us in college. Yeah, definitely. And I remember that day like so vividly in the pouring rain. I don't know who said this, but they said the rain brings out the real ones and really felt that one. And there were so many people out on that day marching across the country, around the world, and joining this movement for the first time. And that was really exciting. And yeah, still going, which is which is super exciting. More from our conversation with Jamie when we return after this quick break. Hey kids, my name's Matthew. I'm a teacher, a librarian, and I'm the host of A Kid's Book About, the podcast. What's a podcast? Great question. A podcast is a show that you listen to, usually on a smartphone or really any device that connects to the internet. You might even be listening to a podcast right now when you're hearing this ad. And at A Kid's Book About, we talk about the big things going on in your world. Every week we chat with authors from our award-winning A Kid's Book About series. A Kid's Book About what? Well, everything. Racism, disabilities, belonging, diversity. What about anxiety? Absolutely. Anything that's important to you is worth talking about. These are the things that are shaping your world, and our guests are people who've been there too. New episodes release every Monday. Find A Kid's Book About the Podcast wherever podcasts are found. Here at A Kid's Company About, we make podcasts, but also books, classes, and even more for kids and families just like yours. We've got a couple new and upcoming books in our Little Book About Board Book series, embracing Tumblrhood's most essential topics. Here's one of our authors sharing a sneak peek. Hey, my name's Alicia, and I'm the author and illustrator of A Little Book About Grit, a new book in the series about what it means to never give up and how that superpower supercharges your growth. Learn more about A Little Book About Grit by visiting akidsco.com. Welcome back to 1.5, a kid's podcast about climate justice. Let's return to our conversation with climate activist Jamie Margolin. Next, we transitioned into the more personal topic of whether Jamie has felt pressure to have being a climate activist be the only part of her identity so early on in life. And 
If any of you listeners have started doing climate activist work already, you may have experienced a similar pressure from peers or adults in your life. Especially because this is a kid's podcast about climate justice, we want to make clear that you don't have to look a certain way or act a certain way to be an activist, and you don't only have to be a climate activist. So can you share with us if you've ever felt that pressure to only show yourself to the world as a climate activist and how you overcame it? Absolutely. I think for a long time, I felt definitely squared in as just like the girl who talks about this catastrophic issue. And that is detrimental to one's identity if you're just seen as someone who fights against something bad and that's your entire thing. And even if it's framed in a more positive way, if you're fighting for climate justice, even then just being purely defined as like a, a very stressful, the very stressful cause that you fight for. People are multidimensional. People are not just their fight for survival. People are so much more. I'm not just someone who marches in the streets because I want a livable future. I'm also someone who is a filmmaker and an artist and a screenwriter and an actress sometimes and a friend and someone who likes going on adventures in nature and city adventures in the different cities that I visit. And you know, so just maintaining balance in your life, having other things that you do, other, obviously you have to focus on something to be good at it. I don't mean have a million activities to, you know, don't overwhelm yourself with things. But the point is like, don't feel pressured to fit into a box of what you think someone who is an activist or who fights for climate justice should be. You can be someone who like for me, my major, what I'm majoring in in college is a film major. I'm not majoring in environmental studies or policy. And people are often like very confused by that. They're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing what I want to do. I like to, I'm an artistic person and I'm going to make art and tell stories and I'll fight for what I care about my way. And oh, I've seen a lot of people who kind of grew up in the movement like us who are now in college. I feel like there's this generation of like Gen Z activists, kind of like the, we kind of, I guess rose to prominence, sorry word, I don't know, but just like the movements kind of not peaked, it's, but definitely like that whole generation of the youth who started the March for Our Lives movement and the Zero Hour youth, like the original youth who started that, we're all like in college now. And it's interesting to see how people back when we were kids, a lot of us were so intense and that was the only thing that we did. And we burnt out a lot of us. And now I've been watching kind of from a distance, my other fellow activists on their journey towards balance and, and how they're perceived and what they do. And like a lot of them are told to be quote unquote professional in terms of like people were told, like, I wasn't by anyone in particular, but I've talked to people about pressure to like not dye their hair a certain thing or maintain a certain level of like quote unquote professionality. But by professionality, it was like, you have to fit into a certain mold to be someone presentable, to be an activist. And it's like, if you want to dye her purple, be an artist, do whatever, like do that. Also, you can do both. And that concludes our conversation with activist Jamie Margolin, which means, you know what time it is. It's time for Climate Justice Game Show. Okay, Zanashi, question number one, what is the value of having different and varied voices to call for climate justice? There is so much value in a variety of voices calling for climate justice. And using our unique voices to call for climate justice is important because we need as many people and perspectives as possible to fix this problem. It's a global systems problem. And we as individuals all make up that system. And so obviously we have to solve it through a variety of voices. And there are so many different ways to do that. And this includes the courts by protesting, by making artwork, and so much more. And the more voices we have a part of that conversation, the more solutions we have. Mm, you know, it's hard to disagree with that. Absolutely. We, we need as many voices as possible calling for climate justice. A climate activist is a look or sound or speak about any one thing. And I love Jamie's answer to this about how we need to pursue all different avenues of action. Okay. Anyway, all to say that's correct. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, Olivia, question two. 
What is Zero Hour and how are the organization's goals being realized throughout the country and around the world? Yes. Okay. Huge fan of Zero Hour. Huge fan. And Zero Hour is a global youth-led, led by youth like Sanaji and Jamie, who founded it when they were in their teens, a youth-led climate justice organization that Jamie and Sanaji are two founders of. And some ways that the organization's goals are being realized throughout the country and world. Well, I've seen you organize strikes. I've seen you speak directly to politicians about what climate action you want to see happen. And I've seen you very often advocate for climate justice policies by doing things like making meetings with legislators and organizing people who share the same goals around climate justice policies and basically Um, I would say the theme is organizing in the streets and speaking directly to government officials about the climate justice actions you want to see happen in the world. Is that right? Absolutely. Thank you, Olivia. Good. Okay. Sanashi, third and final question. Can one be an activist and still share their full expression of interests with the world? Absolutely. And I think that that is something that Zero Hour has done. And we we harness the interests that people have. And when you love doing something, that is when you're at your best. And you have to choose what you love and how you want to get involved. And so climate activists don't have to look, act, or be any type of way. And young people who work on climate justice also have lots of other interests and in parts of their identity. But they are their best when they're able to incorporate those interests and those parts of their identity into the work that we do for climate justice. Because climate justice is about the whole person. It's not just about the climate. Um, it is a human problem. And that's why uh, we welcome everyone in the movement. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's so important for all of us to remember. So thank you for that reminder, Sanaji. And with that, that concludes today's round of the Climate Justice Game Show. As always, thank you so much for playing with us today. Thank you, listeners, for joining us today. And thanks to our guest, Jamie Margolin, for sharing her work and experience with being a climate activist. You can find more about Jamie's work by visiting Zero Hour's website at thisiszerohour.org, by listening to her podcast, Lavender You, or watching her show, Art Majors. We'll have links to everything you need in our show notes. 1.5 is written by me, Zanaji Artis. And me, Olivia Greenspan. With occasional support from me, Joanna, from naturalreaders.com. Our show is edited and produced by Matthew Winner, with help from Ari Mathay and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory. And this show was brought to you by A Kid's Podcast About. This show is inspired by our book, a kid's book about climate change and the millions of young people around the world fighting for their right to a livable future. You can write to us at listen at a kid's podcast about dot com and check out other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting a kid's dot com. Bye for now. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at a kid's company about. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at a kid's podcast about. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kid's Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Oh, 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 oh,